All right, everybody, here's an exploded view of the wood gasification carburetor that I built up for my system. Now, rather than trying to give you guys exact measurements of how I built mine, I got to thinking about it and realized that everybody's going to have different engines along with different carburetor configurations that they got to be able to tie into. So I'm making this video as a generalization because I feel that if you see how it's done and you understand what you're looking at, you'll be able to build it up for any system that you want. Now, this is based on the FEMA build, so I know that it is valid. First, let's take a look at my system right here. This is my main housing for mine. And if you notice, mine's shaped just like a water spigot. Where my finger is, that's the fuel mixture output to the generator. This is the fresh air intake, and then the gas comes in on this side right here. And mine actually mounts up just like this, so I've got a pretty simple setup on mine. Let's take a look at one of the valves here. Notice that I've got a line drawn around this and I've got a slot cut here, which I did that with a hacksaw. And I'll explain all this in a minute. Now I'm going to set him over here. And we're going to look at the same thing here, disassembled. The first thing I had to do was cut this to the proper length for my particular needs. And then I shoved him all the way up inside the PVC pipe here until he butted up. Okay, I took a felt tip marker and I drew a line around it. That was my reference of where it butted up. The reason I did this is... I knew that I had to deal with the 1 8 inch shaft, plus I had a nut that was going to be even a little bit larger since it's going to be screwed onto here. So I had to drill to the left of it to allow this thing to butt up properly to him. And at the same time, I had another trick up my sleeve, and I'm going to show you what I did here. I'm going to zoom in on this, and hopefully the camera will hold up. Notice I got the flat ends of this guy facing this way right here. That's because when he shoves up in here, that that flat end where my finger's at will butt up against here and that keeps the nut from unscrewing, okay? That means this thing ain't going to fall apart on me. That's why I did that. Now, the slot here is for this guy right here because he's like a coin. I had to have a way to get him in here. So I cut a slot and I could shove him in here and of course I've got a hole on the opposite side of this for this guy here to go into. I shoved him in here and I popped him in place and he snaps into place. And once everything's pushed together, it's not going to come apart. So that's why I cut the slot on here. Also, when you go to drill the holes in this thing, you must do this on a drill press. If you don't, you'll be off-centered and this guy will never work. Now, this is the baffle that's going to be made into a valve. And, of course, i got everything soldered here. I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see this. Now, the way I made this guy here was I actually cut everything out by hand, okay? Then I used a pair of hemostats to hold them on here. And then I measured from this side here to here. From this side here to this guy here, and I made sure it was absolutely centered, then I soldered him in. And you're not going to be dealing with any heat, so you're not going to have to worry about anything falling apart. You just don't want to glue anything. You want this to be where it's permanent, where it's not going to fall off. Okay, I did the same thing, by the way, with the pointer. I soldered the nut on top of him, too, so that when I screwed him down onto the shaft and lined him up, then all I had to do was use another nut to bring it up to the top to secure everything in place, and there you go. So that's how I did that. Now this black thing here is rubber, okay? The, how this works, he's going to give this thing an absolute seal. So before you put everything together, clean everything with either denatured alcohol or acetone to get any finger oils or anything that shouldn't be on there that will contaminate it off of the systems. Do it with the rubber piece too. Once you put your valve together, then you're going to take a little bit of glue and either run them on this side here. Use super glue, it'll work perfect. And um, drop him down inside here, like this, shove him, and then massage him with your finger. What he's going to do is going to wind up laying perfectly level and flush on this piece of metal here, and he will make an absolute seal on this thing. So when it's closed, it's closed. Now, can you use it for a water spigot or high pressure? No. But for low pressurization like we're using, it's going to be more than sufficient, and it's not going to peel off. So that's basically it right there, okay? That's all of it in the nutshell. And once again, this is based on the FEMA design. And once you build this up and mount it up, it's not going to fall apart on you. And you can build this up so that it's not going to vibrate loose on you. So the, the settings aren't going to change on you while it's running midway. And all you have to do is make sure that when you put this guy together, to give an extra turn on one of these nuts here, it'll make these things, we'll make them stiff. It'll make them where they're, where they're good and solid so that they're not going to vibrate loose on you while the engine is running. So there you go. If you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email or whatever. And let's move on to the next part of this. All right, here it is fully assembled minus the intake air filter. And everything came out on it nice and tight, so I'm pleased with how the job turned out. 
Now guys, I had planned on testing this weekend, but when I pulled the generator out to service it, I came to the realization that I had a faulty ignition coil on it. So unfortunately, that's going to move all my tests up to this following weekend. Now I do have all of my hoses and everything that I need to interface the generator to the gasifier. Also, I had the generator modified to accept this external carburetor on it. So it's just going to come down to me getting my hands on the replacement part along with some good weather this following weekend. So let's keep our fingers crossed on that. Now before I shut this thing off, I want to let you guys get another upfront close look at it. And like I said, everything came out nice and tight on it. So I'm not concerned about the vibration of the engine changing the mixture ratios by moving the valves around. I'm going to zoom in here for you. Okay. This is the intake here for the air. And everything is very tight on it, so I'm not concerned about vibration issues. And um, I can't wait to get this thing hooked up. I'm chomping at the bit to get a final video done on this before I actually mount everything up onto the trailer. Okay, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to shoot me an email or leave something in a blog. You've got any comments or whatever. So this is Flash 001 USA. I want you guys to have a good Memorial Day weekend once left of it. Bye-bye.